All right. So picking up where we were talking about atomic mass. So atomic mass is something we can find on the periodic table, but atomic mass is really a result of the fact that there's more than one isotope for a particular element. So the way that atomic mass can be calculated is we need to take a weighted average of the masses of every single isotope that's naturally occurring in the sample. So if we put the atomic mass on one side of an equation, we can take the mass of each isotope, so I'm going to say mass of isotope number one, and then multiply by the abundance. Okay, what fraction of the sample is made up by that particular isotope right, of abundance number one? And then we're going to add a similar term for every isotope that is naturally occurring. So mass of isotope number two will be multiplied by its abundance. And if necessary, right, we can add a similar term for the mass of the third isotope and its abundance. Right? And we can continue on for as far as we need to go. Now, we've been using carbon as an example, and carbon has, I guess I already wrote it here, uh, the atomic mass of carbon is 12.01. Well, the two most common isotopes of carbon are carbon-12 and carbon-13. And carbon-12 has a mass of 12. It's actually defined as 12. That's one of the ways the the unit atomic mass unit is defined is that an atom of carbon 12 weighs 12 atomic mass units. Carbon 13 weighs pretty close to 13 um, atomic mass units. There's a little difference in there because some of the mass gets converted into energy for a lot of these. So sometimes the actual mass is a little lower than the masses of what would be the individual particles in the nucleus. But because the weighted average here is so much closer to 12, that tells us most of the naturally occurring carbon is carbon-12, and only a tiny fraction of it is carbon-13. So in fact, it's about 99% carbon-12, about 1% carbon-13. So in this equation, the abundance for carbon-12 would be about 0.99. The abundance for carbon-13 would be 0.1. Right? And that means the mass of the carbon-12 atom is a bigger factor in determining what goes in for atomic mass. Now, the reason we need this is because when we do a calculation or when we weigh out a sample in the lab, we're weighing out billions and billions of atoms of a particular element. So we need to factor in the fact that maybe some of those elements are a little heavier than the others. So here's an example. <clears throat> Bromine's got two naturally occurring isotopes. One has a mass of 78.9, you know, lots of numbers there. Um, and an abundance of 50.69%. The other isotope has a particular mass, makes up the remainder of the sample. We want to calculate the atomic mass. Now, we're going to use this formula, and what we're solving for will be the left side of the formula. So this formula is going to be pretty good for this equation. We've got the two masses. We've got a percentage for one abundance. Now, we want to take the percent out of there. Remember, percent is artificially scaled to 100. So the abundance of the first isotope here, um, which would be bromine 79, um, is going to be 0 0.5069. So take out that 100. Um, I'll talk about, when we get to the end, I'll talk about what might happen if you accidentally leave the 100 in there. Now, we're told the other isotope makes up the remainder. Well, the whole sample would be 100%. Or if you combine the abundances, that should add up to 1. So the abundance of the second isotope, which would be bromine 81 in this case, based on the masses here, would have to be 1 minus 0 0.5069, which would be 4931, or 0 0.4931. Right? Now, that's not uncommon. If there's a second isotope, you're, you're just not told its abundance because that's a kind of a simple math um, exercise to figure out what the abundance of the second isotope would be if you already know the first. Now, if there's three isotopes, you'd have to be given two of them, but you could figure out the third that way, but you couldn't just be given one and try to figure out the other two. Now, just taking the numbers we've got, plugging into this equation, we would get something like this. Atomic mass here for bromine. We would take the mass of the first isotope, and we're going to use all of these 
significant figures here. Now, the way we measure mass of atoms is in a unit called an atomic mass unit, right? We'll use that for another half hour or so. Um, actually, until we get to chapter three, we'll learn how to use a different mass unit. Um, so maybe more than half an hour, but, um, but it's not something that's gonna come up too regularly, but I kind of like to put it in there for consistency. Um, multiply by the abundance of that particular element. Right, and then we'll add a second term that describes the second isotope, the bromine 81. So that's 80.916291 atomic mass units times 0 0.4931. Okay. Now, if we multiply both of these terms out, we've got you know, eight significant figures in our mass, but only four in our... Uh, abundance so we want to keep that in mind that we're going to be significant to four places but again like we talked about in class we don't want to round till we get to the end just on the chance that rounding will change our answer so i'm going to take that mass multiply by 0 0.5069 and that gives me 40.0037 so I kept two extra places there um, to write down. Now I could keep the whole number in my calculator, but you know, maybe just note that's the last place that really is significant, is where that second zero after the decimal is. Okay. Similar for the other term here, we'll take 80.916291, multiply that by its abundance, 0.4931, and that is 39.8998. And similar there, the last place that had significance was really that second digit after the decimal, but I'm going to keep a little more in there just to make sure that we don't have that rounding error. Now, I do need to add these two together. So in my calculator, I can just take that previous answer and add the answer from before. Now I can still see it on the screen here. So I can, I don't know, there's probably a way to call that one back, but I don't know how to do that quite so well. So this is 79.9035 right? But again, we're adding here, they're both significant to the second place after the decimal. This one should only be significant to the second place after the decimal. So our answer here would be 79.90 atomic mass units. That would be the atomic mass for bromine. In fact, if we look on the periodic table here, um, this periodic table that I use rounds everything to two decimal places, 79.90 is what it has for the mass of bromine. So that seems like a pretty reasonable calculation um, there. Now, generally, you won't be able to just look up the answer on the periodic table. That would kind of defeat the purpose of learning how to do the formula. But we will see that in the next example problem, although that next problem is a little long. I don't know that we can fit it on this video, so I'm going to stop here and tune in to the next video to see the other example problem for atomic mass calculations.